Hello guys, I'm back the Mandela Factor channel. So, um, today I'm going to talk about another economic model. So this is going to be an overview of syndicalism. So, syndicalism is a socialist ideology. It's not exactly the same as communism, but it kind of has the same tenets from Marxism. So, in syndicalism, unions are the ones that own and control the means of production. Now, this is considered to be a model of mixed economy. As well, it's very left-wing. The unions are considered autonomous and are not a centralized state body. In fact, syndicalists are against centralism, against a all-controlling party, and they preach federalism instead. And they're also opposed to political parties running in an election. So very much like Marxism, they just like what we today consider to be Leninism. They basically just want a revolution. Instead, they want this through strikes, like unions striking. And they want a federal economic organization of society instead of a party but nonetheless they don't really want sort of this liberal democracy that we envision in say the united states and they themselves are considered the instrument in the struggle against capitalism to eliminate the so-called wage slavery so they're really seeing it more through a union's perspective but once again really similar to Leninism and Marxism in the sense that it's really a struggle against capitalism, but in this case seen more through unity of workers. And they want to protest against, of course, unfair wages and poor working conditions. So when it comes to these unions, we can really consider syndicalists to basically be like radical unionists, Unlike unions that we envision today that just do peaceful protests against unfair conditions or low wages or long hours, these radical unionists will basically do anything to be free of these limiting conditions as they basically see themselves as slaves that need to be liberated completely, emancipated completely, and their revolution will occur regardless of how violent it needs to be because they're in their eyes they're justified for doing it and ultimately they wanted to battle this liberal bureaucracy and reformism within the labor movement that way because they saw this sort of liberal view that unions had as being against this whole idea of world revolution because they just wanted to coexist with the free market. But in 1918, due to the success of the Bolshevik Party's uh, revolution in Russia, syndicalism soon fell into obscurity because geopolitically, syndicalism was more of a Western thing. It was created within France and was more popular in the West than the feudal East near Russia. So it kind of fell into obscurity after that, and Stalin and other communists soon basically united the left under their ideology. And then soon after that, all these communist parties showed up, but basically were just following the Russian model. Um, but in, a, in this scenario called Kaiserreich, where Germany wins the First World War, syndicalism becomes the big socialist ideology, where France and Britain fall to a revolution propagated by unions and seizing power. Now, interestingly, they have similar views on monarchy, so they don't believe that monarchy should exist, and they believe that monarchs should not be in power, and they also don't want all these liberal democracies or even authoritarian dem democracies, like any sort of democracy or so-called like right-wing regime. But again, they sort of make this whole model where there's a bunch of like autonomous councils 
or like unions with an elected chairman. Um, but it can also be argued that in this scenario, the same kind of bureaucracy undoubtedly forms uh, in Kaiserreich, which is kind of similar to what happened with uh, communism in our timeline, because whether it be syndicalism or communism, uh, the ultimate idea never really sort of changes that they're just not compatible and what I just described about cynicalism, since this is an ideology that's never been put into practice, we don't really know how it would look, but we can predict that it would work the same way as communism, where it's an idea, but if put into practice, it will not really work in the way that the people who made it intended it to. So that's kind of a overview of cynicalism. I can go into Sorolinism, which is basically the specific ideology of the French guy who made it, who interestingly becomes the leader of France within Kaiserreich. So uh, I can talk about that in another video, but this is just, again, cynicalism in its most general sense.